Ashkenazi Jews' mysterious origins unraveled by sciences thanks to ancient DNA. Aaron Alhaik, lecturer in Population, Medical and Evolutionary Genomics, University of Sheffield, England, writes this article, Where do the Jewish people come from? This is a question that anthropologists, historians, and theologians have studies, studied for millennia. And according to mythology, the Judeans descended from three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who are buried in the cave of the patriarchs, cave of Machpelah in Hebron of Israel. That's just uh, southwest of Jerusalem. It is a Palestinian city and World Heritage Site located in the southwestern, southern West Bank, 19 miles south of Jerusalem. Buried alongside them are said to be Adam and Eve and the four matriarchs, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel. The cave has never been excavated, but on top of it is a relatively modern building, mid-first century, which Herod the Great built, likely to honor his ancestors. For a more scientific take on the Jewish origin debate, recent DNA analysis of Ashkenazic Jews, a Jewish ethnic group, revealed that their maternal line is European. It has also been found that their DNA has only has 3% ancient ancestry, which links them with the Eastern Mediterranean, also known as the Middle East, namely Israel, Lebanon, parts of Syria, and Western Jordan. This is the part of the world Jewish people are said to have originally come from, according to the Old Testament. But 3% is a minuscule amount, and similar to what modern Europeans as a whole share with Neanderthals. So given that the genetic ancestry link is so low, Ashkenazic Jews' most recent ancestors must be from elsewhere. Not one, but many tribes. To understand why this is the case, we need to go back in time to look at where these other ancestors came from. It starts in Persia, modern-day Iran, during the 6th century. This is where most of the world's Jews were living at this time. The tolerance of the Persians encouraged the Jews to adopt Persian names and words, traditions, and even religious practices, and climb up the social ladder, gaining a monopoly on trade. They also converted other people who were living along the Black Sea to their Jewish faith, and this helped to expand their global network. Among these converts were the Alans, Iranian nomadic pastoral people. The Greeks, the Slavs, who resided along the southern shores of the Black Sea. Upon conversion, they translated the Old Testament into Greek. They built synagogues and continued expanding the Jewish trade network. These Jews adopted the name Ashkenaz, and the DNA of Ashkenazic Jews can be traced to ancient Ashkenaz, an intersection of trade routes in eastern Turkey. The rise of the Ashina. We now know that at the time these Jews adopted the name Ashkenaz, they also acquired unique Asian mutations on their Y chromosomes. This is where another important group of people in our story come into play. They are called the Gok Turks. During the 6th century, these nomadic people were ruled by Siberian Turkic tribe called the Ashina. They were forced by the Chinese Tang Empire, who were in power in China at the time, to migrate westward back towards the Black Sea. Thanks to their organizational and military skills, the Ashina united many tribes in this area, and a new empire called the Khazar Khaganate was born. Offering freedom of worship and taxing trade, these people quickly rose to power. The Asian group of these DNA mutations found in Ashkenazic Jews likely originated from Ashina elite and other Khazar clans who converted from shamanism to Judaism. 
This means that the Ashina and Kor Khazar clans were absorbed by the Ashkenazic Jews. It was also around this time that the Jewish elite adopted many Slavonic customs, and based on my previous research, I would suggest that Yiddish was developed as a secret language to assist in trade. Actually, Yiddish is not a secret language. Yiddish is very close to German. If somebody speaks German, they could very, very easily understand Yiddish. The next chapter. What happened next was that the Jewish empire began to collapse. By the 10th century, the Jews on the Black Sea migrated to Ukraine and to Italy. Yiddish became the lingua franca of these Ashkenadic Jews and absorbed German words while maintaining the Slavic grammar. And as a global trade moved into the hands of the Italians, Dutch, and English, the Jews were pushed aside. What this all shows is that by using modern genetic technology that enables scientists to track the past of modern-day people, a new appreciation for Jewish ancestry can be discovered. It has meant a greater understanding of the journeys these people took to arrive in Europe. It has also allowed for increased knowledge as to the significant role the Ashina and the Khazar clans, from which some of the real Jewish patriarchs actually came from, played. This is on the conversation. I'll leave a link below for you for this.